they tell the story of some monks who went to see a John Sao, who was a John Wen's teacher. And they found him in a forest that was reputed to be very malarial. Everyone who stayed there tended to get malaria, except for John Sao. He managed to live there for many months without getting malaria. And the monks who went to see him didn't attribute this to any special psychic powers or anything, simply the fact that he knew how to look after himself in the forest. As you come out to meditate in a place like this, it's good to know that there are some skills to staying outside as you meditate. Number one, on a windy day like this, if you're going to sit outside and meditate, make sure you sit in a place that's sheltered from the wind. Don't sit right in the wind. It'll be bad for your health. And if you're going to take a nap in the middle of the day, take a nap inside. Don't take a nap outside. That way you don't expose the body to the extremes of the weather outside. And you know how to care for yourself. This is one of the skills of being a good meditator, is learning how to be unburdensome. If you subject yourself to unnecessary diseases, unnecessary conditions that would be hard for your body, you end up getting sick. And then when you get sick, you're a burden on other people. So look after your health. We are training the mind, but it's part of training the mind is learning how to look after the body as well. And just for your information, if you're ever in Thailand and you're going to meditate on the forest, don't meditate in rubber orchards. There's something about the trees in the rubber orchards that exude a, a weird chemical at night, which is really bad for your health. In other words, if you're going to live in the forest, it's good to know the little details about forest life, about the trees, about the, about the animals. One good thing to know about animals, you may run into some snakes around here. And as long as you sit perfectly still, they won't see you. Their eyes are such that they record only motion. So if you sit perfectly still, as far as they're concerned, you're a warm rock. Now, occasionally that's what a snake is looking for, is a warm rock. And John Fuang tells the story one night he was meditating. He came out of deep concentration, and as he opened his eyes, he found that there was this snake on his lap with its head right in his hands. And so he figured the best thing to do would be to go back into concentration. So he did. Came out a couple hours later, and the snake was gone. So when you know the animals, you know the, the weather, you know the climate, You find that meditating outside is a really good thing. We've had some people come here who are used to meditating in, in meditation halls where the things are hermetically sealed and very quiet. We've had them complain that, that this place is much too noisy, to say nothing of the airplanes overhead, but just the sound of the animals and the leaves. If you stay around here long enough, you'll learn to recognize what kind of sounds are bugs crawling over the leaves, what kind of sounds are lizards, what kind of sounds are squirrels, what kind of sounds are snakes. And whatever they are, you spread goodwill. And in the case of the snakes, if they're really near you, just sit very still, and they'll leave you alone. So this is just part of learning how to meditate outside and getting the advantages of being outside and knowing how to avoid the troubles that can come when you're not protected from, from the climate. You learn how to provide your own protection. And it's a good lesson in heedfulness. Just as there are dangers in the wilderness, there are dangers in your mind. So be alert.